Algebra 2, EOC review, day two. Let's look at some radical, rational exponents and polynomial problems. All right, so first thing is, we're gonna look at some radical and rational exponents. Remember, the format of a rational exponent is the power divided by the root when converting the exponent to radical form. So in general form, the nth root of x to the m power, and you can write it both of those ways, equals x to the power over the root, so m over n. So look at that first. We're gonna, number 10, we're gonna draw a line from each rational expression on the left to the radical expression. So 25 to the 1 half power, we can rewrite that using a radical. 25 goes underneath, and that's a square root. Square root of 25 is 5. 4x to the 2 thirds, now it's just x that we put under the radical, so the power is 2 and the root is third root, so that's our last choice. And then finally, x to the 1 third, so under the radical, um, it's just the first power, which we don't have to write, and it's the third root. So that is our top choice. So now let's simplify some radicals. So go to number 22 in your pretest packet, and let's um, work the problem and then we'll select all that are equivalent. So the fifth root of 32, a to the fourth, b to the twelfth, c to the negative five. First we take the fifth root of 32, which is two. Then we look at a to the fourth. We say how many groups of five a's are there in a to the fourth? None, so they stay underneath. With the b's we can take out two groups of five, so that's b squared with two left underneath. And with c to the negative 5, we can take out negative 1 groups with none left. So I scan my answer choices, and I don't see any that match. But I do see one that's close, where my c is in the denominator. So I know that I can rewrite that c to the negative first power um, with c in the denominator. So I know that I could choose choice b. I look at my other answer choices and notice that they are in rational exponent form. So I'm going to change my expression into exponents. So I have 2 and then I have b or sorry, a to the 4 fifths because it's power over root, the b squared that was there, b to the 2 fifths and c to the negative 1. I go ahead and add the exponents of b so I get 12 fifths. So d also is an answer choice. And then I scan and I notice that f is very close to that, but with c in the denominator, and I know that I can rewrite that. So I will also choose choice f as well. So you didn't see me circle it, but let's circle it. Four fifths, yes. Okay, <laughs> on to the next one. Now look at number 29 in your pretest packet. So we need to multiply these. I'm just going to use FOIL. You can use the box method if you like. So first terms together will give me the square root of 6. Outside terms together is the square root of 18 because I can multiply those numbers. And then inner terms together is just 5 times the square root of 2. And then last terms together is 5 times the square root of 6. So I'm going to add together my like terms. So 1 square root of 6 plus 5 is 6 square roots of 6. And then I'm going to simplify my square root of 18, rewrite it as 3 times the square root of 2. I'm going to add that to 5 square roots of 2. So my final answer is choice D. Let's work some problems now in your note sheet. So we have the negative square root of 12 plus 3 times the square root of 3. You can only add roots if they are exactly the same. So I'm just going to simplify the square root of 12. That will simplify to negative, since I have a negative out front, 2 times the square root of 3. Now I can add it to 3 square roots of 3, which gives me positive 1 square root of 3. In our next problem, we're taking the square root of 100 v cubed. So the square root of 100 is 10. And then I can take out one group of two v's, and I have one v left. Square root of 64, m cubed, n cubed. I can take the square root of 64, which is 8. And then there are 
there's one group of two M's and one group of two N's that I can take out with one M and N <laughs> left underneath. All right, look in your notes packet. So we've got some notes on factoring quadratics, or just a reminder. So we're gonna factor by grouping. If you have a trinomial, we'll try that. Also, be on the lookout for a difference of squares. And remember how that will factor. So your first term plus times your first term minus. And then as always, look out first to see if you can factor out a GCF, or a greatest common factor. So stay in your notes packet and let's just work these example problems. So we need to factor and solve x squared minus nine. So I see that I have a difference of squares because I can square x to get x squared and three to get nine. So that will factor as x plus three times x minus three. Set those both equal to zero and solve. And our two solutions are negative three and positive three. The next problem, is also a difference of squares because see how you can square 4x to get x squared and 5 to get 25 so it factors as 4x plus 5 times 4x minus 5 setting those each equal to 0 and solving our first answer is negative 5 fourths and our second answer is positive 5 fourths now our third problem is a trinomial. So we'll go for the trinomial factoring. We're looking for two numbers that will multiply to give us a times c, which is negative 28, and combine to give us negative 3. So negative 7 and positive 4 will do that for us. Since our a value is 1, we can go right to our set of parentheses and write those factors as x minus 7 times x plus 4. Set them each equal to 0, and our solutions are 7 and negative Four. Look back or stay in your notes packet. So sometimes you'll be asked to factor a sum or a difference of two cubes. So to do that, there's not a process to work your way to the answer. You need to have those pattern, patterns memorized. So the sum of two cubes will factor as the first plus the second times the first squared minus first times second plus the second one squared. A difference of two cubes will factor very similarly, but just notice how the signs change. Now, if you look at the first example, we have 64x cubed plus one. So 64x cubed is a four x that's being cubed. And to get one, you simply cube in uh, one. <laughs> so putting that in the pattern, we have the four x plus one times the 4x squared, which gives us the 16x squared, minus 4x times 1, which is just that, plus 1. And then you can see how that works out with the difference of two numbers that are being cubed, or expressions. All right, so go to number 5 now in your pretest. We need to factor each polynomial completely. So we're going to draw a line from each polynomial on the left to the corresponding factored form on the right. It's going to get a little visually full, but we can make it work. So the first one, x squared plus 25, that doesn't fit any patterns that we know. So let's just move on to the next, and we'll come back to that when we have more choices available. Or I mean less. We've narrowed down. So 4x squared, I recognize, is the difference of 2 squared. So it will factor as 2x plus 4 times 2x minus 4. But I notice that I can continue in factoring by taking a 2 out of each of those. I multiply those 2 together, and so I get 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. The order doesn't matter, though, so that's my top choice. Now I look at my third expression down, trinomial, and I'm going to do some quadratic factoring. So I can see that 10 and negative 3 will give me two numbers that multiply to give me 30 and add to give me 7. I factor by grouping. Now you can see that I got my answer and I did not notice the one that matches with it. I just missed that, 2 below. I thought there was a mistake, so I just drew and said that there was a mistake. I'm going to go back and change that. But first, I'm going to factor this difference of two cubes. 
So it's x and a 3 that's being cubed, and it will fit into the pattern of x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. And then I noticed that there is a correct answer choice, so I changed it. Now, if we're looking for that answer of the difference of two cubes, we don't see it. But I do see one that I believe is my choice because it has that second expression, x squared plus 3x plus 9, factored into imaginary numbers. So by process of elimination, I will choose that one. <clears throat> now let's go back to x squared plus 25. Let's start with our answer choices. So I know that x plus 5 times x minus 5 will not work because that, if I square it, will get x squared minus, minus 25. And that's not what I um, have. I have x squared plus 25. I know that my next answer choice is not the one because it was a distractor for my one above. So I square this one out. And when I simplify, I see that I get x squared plus 25. So sometimes if you have a factoring problem and am not sure how to factor it, then just go to your answer choices and multiply. So you're working backwards. There. <laughs> All right, let's back this one whoop, up just a little bit. All right, so look with me at number 11. So we have the graph of a polynomial function, and we need to choose its factorization. So I'm going to notice where my zeros are. I notice that at negative 2, my curve is bouncing. It's not crossing, so that means I have an even power from its factor. And my 0 at 3 is crossing. So it's going to look something like this. When I put it in an expression, it's the opposite sign, so it becomes x plus 2 even power would be squared times x minus 3. Now, I right away chose this, but then I realized that my end behavior was up on the left, down on the right. So that is like a negative slope. So that means my a value was is negative. So I'm going to change my answer choice to... Let's see if you can do it for me. It just keeps to D. So that's going to be the choice that we want. All right, now let's look at number 18 in your pretest packet. And then um, I'll stop this video and do the rest of this section in a part two video. So for the polynomial function, we're going to select values that complete each statement. So we need to know how many zeros. Well, that's easy. You just look at the degree. There's three total zeros. Now the next choice asks for real and non-real. So we know how to um, find zeros by factoring. So let's see if this polynomial will factor. So I'm going to factor by grouping. And I can see that it will factor for me. And my two factors are x plus 5 times x squared plus 9. Now I'll set those each equal to 0. So I get a real number answer of negative 5 and two non-real zeros of plus and minus 3i. So this polynomial has one real zero and two non-real zeros. So actually I'm going to do one more problem before I pause this video or sorry, stop the video. <laughs> okay, so in your notes packet, if a polynomial has real and non-real roots, the non-real roots come in pairs. They're called conjugate pairs, just like what you saw. So we had a positive and a negative, 3i. So this problem says write the equation for the cubic functions whose roots are 2 and 4i. So if it's cubic, we need three roots, but one of those is imaginary. So that means we have the pair, conjugate pair, that they go together. So we have the negative one as well. So I know if I see an imaginary root, then I also have an imaginary root of the opposite sign. 
So now I can put that together in an expression. So opposite signs, x minus 2, x minus 4i, x plus 4i. And then if I need to multiply that together, I'm going to multiply my imaginary terms together. And that'll give me x squared plus 16. And now I'll multiply those together. So I get x cubed plus 16x minus 2x cubed minus 32. I'm just going to rearrange that in standard form. All right, be sure that you watch the part two video um, for this review section on radicals, rational exponents, and polynomials for the Algebra 2 EOC.